are very few times in Russian society where there isn't some holiday. In winter, you have Christmas for 14 days. There's Defender of the Motherland Day and Maslenitsa. In the springtime, you have Women's Day, Pasa, the Victory Day. And in summer, that's when everyone takes their mandatory two weeks off to go somewhere warm. But the fall seems to be pretty devoid of anything special to celebrate. After all, most people are at their dacha, their mountain or meadow homes, harvesting all the crops that they planted in the spring. So everyone seems busy unless you realize the unofficial holiday that is the silent hunt. The silent hunt isn't on any calendar, but it's something that the minute you leave the big cities in September all the way through early November, you'll see hundreds of parked cars on the side of the road waiting for their owners to return with hordes of mushrooms. I was lucky enough to get an invite by my friend's older brother Vadim and her nephew to go with them on their first big hunt of the year. He actually invited me a few months ago in the summer to go, but it was a little more disappointing because it was frankly too early to go mushroom hunting. So with empty buckets and a heart full of hope, we set out about an hour outside of Razan, an ancient city established in the 11th century to find some untouched land and a hope for big and plentiful fungi. We had a mark on a map, but ended up seeing dozens of cars parked about 20 minutes away from our place. So Vadim decided to pull over and try our luck with the other silent hunters here. There's hundreds of little white dots. And we certainly had some small luck here. We found a handful of Polish mushrooms, at least that's what they told me they were called, as well as a handful of these red ones that apparently are good for pickling. Do I need the knife? Mm-hmm. I gotta cut this off. That works. What'd you find? The regular one. Oh, so that's a regular mushroom. Oops. Well done. Wow, so right, literally, we parked, walked all the way through here, and the very first place had one of those. Mushroom hunting is so cool. done there we headed out another 20 minutes further into a purely birch forest that was stunningly beautiful and great for videos and photos but less good for edible mushrooms however this place had more gems in it than simply edible mushrooms the floor was covered with these familiar little guys. I'm sure you've seen these in the Mario games. This is Amanita muscaria, fly argix, or as they call them here, berserk mushrooms. You see, Vikings and Slav use these little guys to literally go berserk before they fight each other. 
and even the northern reindeer herders here drank the milk and pee of their reindeer, using them to divine messages from nature. As far as I know, you can't actually eat them, but the fact that we saw a thousand of them, and that's not hyperbole, means that I got some really beautiful photos and even some videos for the video to share with you guys. This is the best one we found. And it's huge. Look how big it is. It's beautiful, huh? Yeah. Uh, wow. They just pop out, out of nowhere. This little stretch of forest doesn't have a lot of regular mushrooms, but it has a ton of Amanita muscaria. Wow. So pretty. Oh, oh, another one. Look at this guy. They just pop out at you. I mean, gosh, they're just so big. Like the size of my hand. So the other interesting thing that you'll see so this is, I mean, you can just tell, it's all the same, right? But then occasionally, you'll come up on something like this. Uh, someone came through here at some point in history, I don't know when, and cut this little strip off, and they use it for like notebook paper back like in the ancient Slavic times. They used to write all their, uh, all their lettering and doing their homework on this stuff. You can also turn this into a bunch of arts and crafts and shoes and just all sorts of cool stuff. There's all sorts of stuff you find in here. Another big patch. All these really cool Amanita muscarias just popping out of nothing. It's like fairies put them out here. Oh, and a little missing, uh, little missing thingy-majig. Well, I noticed all these little bugs in here, but then I saw that, and now I'm concerned. <laughs> so these. Oh, she's even covered in them. Jeez. Yeah, they're everywhere. They're probably on me, I just can't tell. But somehow inside this bag, there's thousands of these little stink bugs. And they're on everything. It's an interesting day. Look at this thing. I mean, it's as big as my hand. And I have big hands. Can you stand next to it? So I can get like scale? Yeah, look. Oh my God, it's so big. Wow. So we were just having lunch and we saw this guy and we fought over whether this was a white mushroom or not. And she looked over and found a giant white mushroom, a bealy mushroom right next to the car. Oh, there's another one by your hip. Okay. Yeah, need to be pushed. Yeah. There's another one by your hip block. Oh. Right here. Oh, it's good. Oh. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, So we left there and went on probably another 40 minutes deeper into the woods and found a place with only one car, which means they're either incredibly wise and know what they're doing or very unlucky and stubborn. Being concerned for the latter, my friend's older brother asked if they had any luck, and they had buckets full of mushrooms, and to our luck, they were actually leaving for the day. It turns out that basically they said we needed to cross the entire pine tree field that we were in because they picked it pretty clean, but once we passed everything they hit, they said that there's an insane amount of this one type of mushroom, and I'm gonna mess this up, it's called masliata. It's these little slimy guys that apparently make very, very good soups, and it shares a base word with the word masla, butter, because they have this shiny slime on top of them. And let me tell you, boy howdy did we find them. Mm -hmm. no, 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 no,
So what makes it bad? Is it the holes? Mm -hmm. Oh, so that makes it bad. Okay, let's try this one. Okay. 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 <laughs> Ooh. They're everywhere. Hey. Ooh, sharp. They're just Ooh. hiding deep. Deep in there. So, you can see that there's no holes in the stem, so there's no worms. It's good to eat. Into the bucket. Sometimes they're nice and small. So I came over because I saw these. They're kind of old and spoiled. And then right next to them, I found these guys. Perfect little mushrooms. Way up in there. Yeah. Mm. Good. Good. Oh, on Andalusia. Just a bunch of. Looks like I found my little fairy grove. Ooh. Was it four or five? Let us go. This size. Oh. Bless. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's three, four. And five. Oh. Nice. Covered in grass, but. That's a beautiful one. That's a great mushroom. <laughs> wow. Billy? <laughs> no. Put video zik. Да, да, да. Давай его сюда собирать. Скорее, вот это вот прям сам клёвый. Это не надо его. At the end of the day, we found nearly 10 kilograms of mushrooms that varied from white mushrooms, Polish, pig, berriozic, and even ginger mushrooms. Not even mentioning the thousands of inedible and ornamental mushrooms that we saw. And that left us heading home very, very tired, but also very, very fulfilled at a successful hunt for the season. But the journey from bringing these mushrooms from field to plate had 
only just begun as the sun was setting. We were up till one in the morning preparing these little guys, freezing and pickling them, so that way we can enjoy this memory, this harvest, for months to come. But I figured I'd save you the boring part of us chopping and peeling them, and instead wish you some happy and silent hunting. I'll see you guys next week.